Today's video is very, very special. I'm gonna talk about writing a letter to my younger self. This is something I've been thinking about. This is something that I have um, thought about often. If I had the ability to go back in time, what would I tell my younger self? What knowledge would I bring to myself? And I, I've been thinking about this all day. And one of the things that I would tell myself was to do more. You know, it's kind of funny because the do more principle over at Savage Finance, but I would tell myself to do more, to experiment more, and to actually take more chances. I look at myself how I used to be, and I look at myself now, which is a matriculation of all life's events to me. And I remember that I used to go places and people would literally adopt me. And I should have really leaned into that because I met a lot of really wonderful and kind people who gave me great memories, who gave me a lot of love, a lot of affection. But one of the things that I would tell myself is to embrace that heart, to 10X that, so to speak. Because meeting people, I remember here in Atlanta, when I was at Renecrate, I was part of a networking group. And I joined the networking group and I made four of the guys really good friends and I actually ended up working for one of the guys at Panel Systems. And that energy, that openness, that ability to connect with people, I really, knowing what I know now, I would have leaned so hard into that. Another thing I would tell myself, don't get married until you're 30. I would have told myself that because even though I wanted to get married, even though I felt I was ready for marriage, I really didn't start to come into my own until I hit my 30s. And I feel that if I were to get married today, I would have been a much better husband than I was before because of all the stuff I know. Also, I would have told myself to start earlier because this is one of the things that kind of weighs on me is I really started this whole process later in life because at first when I was in the military, I tried to start businesses and this is when I had all of these failures, but I should have kept going. And that's one of the things because I did that and I didn't really try the entrepreneur thing for about, that was like 1988, 89, I was going through that phase. And then I got out the military in 91 and I did not get back to entrepreneurship for almost 10 years. That was a mistake. Uh, I went through a lot of stuff, but I would have like started earlier. Kept, I should I would I should have kept going. I, I would have been like, man, I would have been so much happier because I got a job and I was a good employee, but what I should have done was to kept going. Uh, now, another thing that I would not have to tell myself that concerning the ladies, I wouldn't have to, I wouldn't change any of that. That was cool. That was one of the things that I did right, was I was open, I enjoyed myself, a multitude of women. I wouldn't change that. I, wouldn't, I would not have any advice to that. The only relationship advice I would have had was to get married at 30, but all that other stuff, no, because that's kind of when things opened up and I created so many paradigms, so many good memories, so many wonderful experiences. So I wish what I had did with the ladies, I wish I had done that with entrepreneurship. Another thing that I will tell myself is to forgive those who hurt me because I'm a person that holds grudges. I, I mean, you know, I've become much better, much better than this because typically I'll have my little grudge period and then I'll just move on. I won't even think about the person or what they did and I'll just move on. 
and it took me a long, long, long time to get here. But man, when I was younger, I could hold a grudge forever. I could be, we would be enemies. We'd be like Dragon Ball Z going at each other. And that's something that I really wish I had not done. I would also tell myself not to, I lost a really good friend because um, he, he and his wife were divorcing. And we always had this flirty kind of strange relationship and he was out knocking them down. He was knocking them down and he was getting divorced. And then one day I was over there talking to her and then one thing led to another and a lot of lines were crossed. Many, many lines were crossed. And that cost me one of my better friends because even though he was out in the streets doing his thing, you know, that was still his wife and I violated that trust. So if I could go back in time, I would have said, don't do that because it is really hard to get friends like that. It is crazy hard to get friends like that. And also I would tell myself to start traveling earlier because I, I did a little bit of traveling and then there was this this big period where I didn't do any traveling I, I literally didn't leave the state of Georgia for many years other than interstate travel but I would say you know because when I was traveling because when I was going to Korea Japan Guam South America Panama this is when all of this growth happened and I started to meet all of these people but I would say definitely start traveling again but before the pandemic hit i was going to go skiing at steamboat and more than likely it'll probably happen next year or the year after that i'll do that another thing i would tell myself is to write more i was in a phase where i was writing and there was a period of time where i was writing every day and that was just such a renewing such a great period of my life and I really wish I had written more every day. I would also go back and I would have pressed my mother for more information about my, my background. I, cause this didn't happen until a few years ago. You know, she died 2012. I got that information in 2012. I should have pressed her harder and pushed her because I have a whole other family out there I know nothing about. I don't know who they are. And ladies, if you get pregnant by some dude and you get mad at the dude and you withhold that child and that dude from getting to know each other, shame on you. You're a disgusting woman because this is something that's going to plague that child for the rest of their life. And you are the controlling factor in that decision. Um, one of the things is there are so many men who are not in their children's lives. And it's not because the men don't want to be. It's because the mother has an agenda and the mother is just a trifling wench. I mean, it is what it is. And this is one of the things because, you know, I knew my mother could be extremely hard headed and she could be extremely stubborn and strong-willed. And I know from knowing her that there was some issues on her side. I know this. And, you know, you, you can't go back and fix things later, you know? You, you just can't. But I wish I had really pressed her in my 20s because there would have been enough time to ingratiate that family, get to know those people. And at the time that she gave me that information, I was like 43, I believe. I think, however old I was in 2012. And it was really bad because I look at the bright spots in my life. I look at the wonderful moments in my life when I was very outgoing, gregarious, and many, many good things happened. And I would have expanded on that phase. I would have definitely expanded on that phase. And fortunately for me, at the age of 32, I began to get it together. 
I began to build because the third 32 is when I got the job at rent a crate and my life has been on an upward trajectory ever since. Each year has been better, more money, more everything, more happiness. It's just been better. There's only been a few little blips. Well, more than blips. Actually, there was only one blip since I got the job at rent a crate and move forward. There's only been one real blip since then. Hmm. Life has been really good. And this is one of the reasons that I'm starting the corporate uh, toolbox community. It's my goal to turn 50,000 people into me, to start businesses, to build. And this is something I'm really, really passionate about because you know, when we have these conversations here and I talk about my life experiences and I have all of these people who are so unfamiliar with that, they don't know what it's like to live in a million dollar neighborhood. They don't know what it's like to literally go out into the world each day and not be judged on the content, the color of their skin. Like for me, I don't really, I don't feel racism and that someone put a comment like just because you live in the blessed zone, essentially my whole life, because of who I am as a person and how I interact, re, interact, inter, interrelate to other people, I have just not felt the sting of racism. I just haven't. And I know for the whole tips and it's like, oh God, every black person's go. I've, I've just not, I've just not felt the sting of it. And a big part of why I have not felt the sting of racism is because I've been a corporate citizen. It makes a world of difference. Money matters, money matters, money matters. It matters how people treat you. It matters how people perceive you. And even though when I was running my Craigslist protocols, none of these chicks knew I had money because I didn't lead with the money. I led with the intellect. I led with the game. And but it still played a factor because of where I lived in the lifestyle that I had in the free time because I was doing stuff for lunchtime, I have lunchtime hookups. At one time there was this girl who was so bad and she had this strange schedule. We hooked up at 4 a.m. in the morning. It, it, it was just becoming a corporate citizen has facilitated me owning my time. And I'm, I'm, I'm really peculiar about that because I don't let anyone infringe on my time or try to dictate what I should do with my time. And I've been owning my own time since pretty much this YouTube phase. Because when I was in the storage auction business, I was a business owner, but I did not own my time. This is what YouTube has done for me. YouTube has allowed me to own my time and I can do it with my time what I want to, and I can build, I can create. There's so many things that I can do because I'm a corporate citizen and I own my time. And this is one of the things I wanna do for 50,000 people is get them into a position where they own their time. Because I look back at my life and I've always been a certain kind of way, you know, that people will meet me and people instantly like me. And that has been, you know, except here on the YouTube things, because I get people like who literally stalk me and send me unsolicited emails and all this other crazy stuff. But that's just kind of part of the deal because the haters I have today, they are lightweights compared to the haters I used to have during the height of the storage auction phase. Those haters, they were in the gym, they were working out, they were staying, they were <laughs> sucking on the haterade, steroids, they, they were going, they were out of control. They were out of control. So the haters I have right now, I got one ardent fool who tries to stalk me, but he doesn't understand what he doesn't know. And this is one of the things that I would also tell myself, do not be afraid of the unknown. There was a few times where, cause I didn't know I did not move forward. And I would tell anyone that, I remember I was dating this girl 
and she had this beautiful expression. She was a teacher and she said, during the summer, I say yes to everything. If someone says, let's go to Vegas, I'm going. And I felt that was a really good attitude. It was uh, something that I wish that I had adopted earlier in life, something that I had taken hold of because being open to experiences and this is one of the things that we're going to do because like i'm going to put together a, maybe a discord community for the uh, corporate citizens once we really get rolling because i want to get a good number of people in there and we're going to be talking about new experiences and we're going to be talking about essentially like i had a consult call today and it went really well because i understand me being a business owner. I understand that. I know that very really well. And one of the things I have to understand is you as a upcoming business owner. And it's a totally different bag because I could literally sit up here in this office and spend eight hours coming up with a new product or something and literally make hundreds of thousands of dollars. Whereas you don't have that skill set yet. You can develop it but you got to go through what I went through to develop it. And this is kind of where we have this disconnect because I will admit like, you know, today I did a live stream on Savage Finance and you know, I know nothing about student loans. I didn't have any student loans. I, I know nothing about it. So this is one of the things you know, if I don't know anything about it, I would instantly say, I don't know. I just simply don't know. But you know, it's, it's rare that I say that. It's really rare. So one of the things to my young men, I would tell you to be courageous. I would tell you to become warriors. I will tell you to go out and slay dragons. The younger you are, the more experiences you should have, the more things you should try, the more things you should be open to. And this is where I think some of my comments become misconstrued when I talk about, you know, black folks don't want to hang out with white folks. That's kind of part of the openness because I remember when I was in the military and I had a roommate who was Jewish and we used to talk about Jewish people, what they went through in a very real, honest, open manner. And I really got to know him and I got to know what they was thinking. And he would tell me, you know, it's like, and see, this is what Jews do to their children. They indoctrinate them with the legacy because he is like, never again. He had been indoctrinated by his parents who had been indoctrinated by their parents. And this is how you create legacies, kind of like my video on Savage Finance about developing generational wealth. If you go ahead and build a gang of money and just leave it to your kids and don't tell them how to handle it, more than likely they're gonna blow it because there were no instructions. There was no guidance. There was no provisioning of your, your wishes and intentions. So this is one of the things that we're gonna do is an indoctrination into the corporate toolkit. I want to indoctrinate you guys into the ways of the corporate world because essentially once you understand the corporate law and you understand what you can do and you understand how limitless you are, it, it, it would be like unleashing a chained up animal. You just get, you just be like, ah, you will go crazy because see, you don't know what you don't know. And this is a very solid point that I've been contemplating because when you don't know what you don't know, this leads to many, many issues because, you know, I know enough about enough stuff that if I don't really know something, I know enough where I can research it intelligently. And I want to get you guys to that point because, you know, I had a question in the live stream from a nurse and, you know, it never really dawned on her. And this is an intelligent woman but that she could start her own staffing agency and hire herself out and double her income. See, she kind of knew how staffing agencies worked and she had heard that, you know, staffing agencies would charge $200 or the nurse would get a hundred. She knew that from an intellectual level, but she didn't understand it from a freedom level. And I want to bring more people to the freedom level because see, You've been indoctrinated by your parents, society. There, there's so many things that you've been indoctrinated that you are kind of have chains upon your mind. And this is kind of where I get into it with people because I have no chains on my mind. And this is like, you know, 
with some of the haters like, I'll try something and I have no problem failing. If it didn't work out, it didn't work out. On to the next thing. And there are many people who would not start a YouTube channel because literally I think I started eight, I believe, and I just lost interest and I didn't have the information that I have now. And now I was like, oh, this is how you do YouTube. This is how you do it. Because I mean, I don't know what's up with this one fool who's so preoccupied about me and YouTube and my success. I don't, I don't really understand this because for me, that's a disconnect because I don't go around hating on people who are doing better than me. That's just foreign to me, I don't do that. And one of the things I'm learning from my haters is how inferior people feel because you have to be really lower than low to go around and attack someone who's done nothing to you, hadn't said anything to you, you're just going to do an unsolicited attack because this person has said or done something that has triggered you. Your life has got to be garbage. It's got to be. And it's interesting because like Savage Finance, and I'm really, really proud of this. For this channel, it took me like two, almost three years to get 10,000 subscribers. I did that on Savage Finance in five and a half months. And we're gonna come out of August with 12, possibly 13,000 subscribers. Just depends on how this last week goes. I mean, I, I've gotten 5,200 subscribers on Savage Finance this month. I have not gotten 5,200 subscribers on this channel this year. So I'm really, really excited about that because there's a lot of stuff that's coming on Savage Finance, a lot more content, a lot, because I've got all kinds of creative ideals. And this is because my mind has no chains on it. See, if your mind has chains on it, you're only gonna go as far as those chains allow you to go. And a lot of people don't know that their minds have chains on them. Because when I bring up a concept and when I talk about certain things and people just instantly reject it, those are your chains. Like, Arr! you're like that dog who's bark barking and running and then Arr! the chain pulls him back and feet slide up in the air because he's held back by that chain. And I want to unchain people and I want to take people to the promised land. Because if you had told me in 1999 that this would be my life right now I would have slapped you for playing with my emotions for toying with my emotions because it was really really bad it was so bad I mean all of the things that have happened and all the other things and I've, I've learned to let a lot of stuff go just let it go because if you can't enforce your rights or control it, there ain't nothing you can do, and it's just best to let that go. So I let a lot of things go. And one of the things that I have found that to be extremely awesome is I ran into someone I used to date. Well, someone I tried to date, and this happened years ago. And this is like after the YouTube success and everything, I was like, hey, how you doing and everything? Because, you know, I hadn't thought about this chick in years. And she had gained like 50 pounds. She was still cute, but not as cute as she used to be. And she was very flirtatious. And I found out when I, when I was interested in her, she had no children. Now she had two children by two different dudes. And I was just sitting there like, ah, there was no attraction. I just wasn't gonna do that. And one of the things that I want you guys to understand is when you live well, and then later on when people that used to crap on you see that you have elevated, it is so awesome, it is so sweet because I have family members who who, who mistreated me, who were unkind to me, and folks who made jokes about this YouTube thing, and my cousin posted a picture of my new Porsche on her page, and she said, that's for them, because you living well, you moved on, you, you didn't, because see, it is a waste of time to sit and fight with someone for years, and this is one of the reasons that I don't keep grudges anymore, because a grudge is active negative energy 
that you're holding on to. And I, I learned to let that go. But it, it's like, I don't even think about those people. They don't matter. They really don't matter. What matters is this beautiful legacy that I'm giving, I'm in the midst of creating. You know, because I'm really jazzed about this because if I can take 50,000 regular people to the promised land, where you're living like me, where you're paying cash for Porsches, where you're living in a neighborhood you want to live in, where you are indoctrinating your children with the corporate culture, man, that's cooking with gas right there. That, that just gets me so excited because I know I can do it. Because I've done it to a small degree, but I've not focused on it like a laser because see, with the corporate toolbox, it is like right now, I'm running the founder special, like from now to the end of September, and you can get in for a one-time fee or get on the payment plan once you pay your payments. But after September, I'm gonna flip it to a monthly subscription. So if you want to get in and get all of this good knowledge that's gonna be coming for years and years and years, because see, this is the thing, business is always changing. So I'm gonna be constantly updating it and putting it out. So this is why I'm excited. And it's something that I can get my arms around. It's something I know I can do. It's something I can enjoy. And I'm gonna enjoy the people and I'm gonna enjoy the conversations because one of the things that I want people to understand is you can be anything you want in America. And that's not me just blowing smoke up your booty. But once again, what, what the other part of that is you've got to do certain things. You got to put certain things into play to get to that level. And that's what we're going to do. So. If you are ready to transform your life, and I'm not just saying this because I'm selling the course, but the corporate toolbox is going to be a transformative experience because, and also it's going to take a few years. Let's just go ahead because you are who you are right now. But when I'm done with you, you're going to be a corporate citizen, kicking butt, taking names, making money, and enjoying and living life. Who knows? There may be a brand new Porsche in your future. So with that, go below, go ahead and enroll. Uh, I'm waiting on some things to happen because I'll be talking about my new corporate structure reorganization. I'm probably gonna bring in my CPA on a few of these calls and stuff. So you're gonna be getting solid, practical, real world advice and training. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be so good. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Be sure to watch this next video.